common stock as shares of corporate ownership. Common stocks represent shares of corporate ownership. Common stock is also known as equities in equity securities. Each share of common stock represents a portion of financial claim to the company's equity and a vote on any corporate governance matters brought up for vote at the corporation's annual meeting. Corporations issue common stock to raise money for investors. When corporations first issue common stock, this is known as an initial public offering, or an IPO. Investors who purchase shares of common stock directly from the issuing corporation can sell their shares in the secondary market. The market value of shares of common stock is based on the expected future income of the corporation. As news changes, so does the financial forecast for the backing corporation, resulting in fluctuating market values of their shares of common stock. For most large corporations, the common stock can be traded in one or more of the stock markets. When a company has stock that is not publicly traded, it is referred to as closely held. For closely held firms, the owners are usually directly involved in the management of the company and takeover is generally not an issue to be concerned with. Two of the most important characteristics of common stock are the residual claim and the limited liability features. Residual claim means that the shareholders of the common stock are at the end of the priority list regarding a claim on the corporation's assets. In the event of bankruptcy and liquidation, suppliers, tax authorities, employees, bondholders, preferred stockholders, and any other entity that is owed money by the firm will be paid before the shareholders of corporate stock. Common stock shareholders have a residual claim on the income left over after all other parties have been paid. Manic can decide to either pay the residual as a cash dividend to shareholders, or they can choose to invest the income back into the growth of the company. Limited liability means that the shareholder can only lose up to the amount that they originally invested into the company. Common stock shareholders cannot be pursued for their personal assets by the creditors in the event of failure. In the event that a corporation goes bankrupt, the worst case scenario for common stock shareholders is that they hold worthless stock. They are not liable at a personal level for the company's financial obligations, hence the term limited liability. Corporations are controlled by a board of directors. The operations of the corporation are run by managers who are selected by the board of directors. The board of directors oversees the performance and actions of the managers to ensure they are acting in the best interests of the shareholders. Publicly traded companies are required to hold an annual meeting at which the board of directors are elected. Members who are not able to attend the annual meeting can vote via proxy. The proxy gives another shareholder the power to vote on their behalf or as shareholders direct the proxy holder to vote. Usually, management solicits proxies from shareholders and generally gains the power to represent a majority of the shares. Thus, management usually runs the firm in the way that they believe is best. Stock Market Listings Here is a listing of stocks traded on the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange, called the NYSE for short, is one of several markets that stocks are traded on. In this listing, let's examine and interpret Chesapeake Energy. Under the symbol column, you can see that it reads CHK. This is the stock symbol or stock ticker symbol for Chesapeake Energy. The column that reads DIV percentage yield is the percentage of the stock that the company pays as an annual dividend. This means that for CHP, their annual dividend paid to shareholders over the last 52 weeks is 2.03% of the price per share of stock. The P.E. ratio is the current price of a share of stock divided by the earnings per share over the past 12 months. The column that reads MKT cap is the market cap of Chesapeake Energy's common stock. The market cap is listed in millions to simplify the table that Chesapeake Energy's market cap is $11,114,000,000. This means that the market value of all of Chesapeake Energy's outstanding shares is worth $11,114,000,000. Therefore, Chesapeake Energy is worth around $11,114,000,000. Under the daily section, take a look at the last column. This is the last price that a share of stock was sold for that day. Therefore, the latest price per share of Chesapeake Energy common stock was $17.24.
The column where it reads CHG is the change in price from the previous trading day. Chesapeake Energy had a change in price per share of 53 cents. Where it reads percentage CHG stands for the percentage change in price from the previous day. Therefore, Chesapeake Energy price per share of stock increased by 3.17%. The column that reads YTD percentage CHG represents the change in price year to date. This is the percentage price change so far since the beginning of the current year. Therefore, Chesapeake Energy stock has lost 32.8% of its value since the beginning of the year. Now take a look under the 52-week range section. The low is the lowest price per share of common stock in the past 52 weeks. The lowest price per share for Chesapeake Energy stock in the last 52 weeks was $16.41. Where it reads last is a bar which represents that price change of the stock and a black dot which represents the latest price per share relative to the price range. You can see that Chesapeake Energy stocks current price is near the lower end of the price range. Therefore, it is trading near its 52-week low. The 52-week high for Chesapeake Energy stock is $29.92, and the percentage change is the percentage change in price in the last 52 weeks. Chesapeake Energy's common stock shares have lost 32.5% of their value in the last 52 weeks. Preferred stock. Preferred stock has both features similar to both common stock and bonds. Preferred stock are non-voting shares of stock that, like bonds, usually receive a fixed stream of dividend payments each year. In a way, preferred stock is a form of a perpetuity since it pays an infinite fixed dividend payment. Preferred stock is also similar to bonds as it does not give the shareholder voting power on issues voted by owners. Although preferred stock has features that are similar to bonds, preferred stock is still considered an equity instrument. The underlying company has no contractual agreement to make dividend payments on the preferred stock and has the discretion to hold dividend payments if it feels necessary. Dividend of preferred stocks are cumulative. Unpaid dividends build up over time and must be paid in full before any dividends can be paid to common stockholders. This differs from bonds and other debt instruments because firms are contractually obligated to make timely interest payments. If the firm fails to make timely interest payments on debt instruments, the firm risks bankruptcy. Preferred stock also differs from debt instruments because dividends are not tax deductible in the way the interest payments on debt are. This disadvantage is offset by the dividend exclusion rule where domestic corporations are allowed to exclude 70% of dividend income received from other domestic corporations from their taxable income. This makes preferred stock an attractive form of fixed income for many U.S. corporations. Although preferred stock is of lower priority than corporate bonds on the claim of the underlying company's assets, they often still sell for lower yields. It is presumed that this is because of the dividend income exclusion because theoretically a higher risk investment should return higher yields. Without the dividend income exclusion of preferred stock, the yields would be considered unattractive compared to other available assets that deliver higher yields. Preferred stock can also come with certain attachments similar to corporate bonds. For example, preferred stock can be callable, meaning that the issuing firm can buy them back from the stockholders to avoid making any further dividend payments. Preferred stock can also be converted to common stock at a specific conversion ratio. In recent years, financial innovation has taken place where the dividends on preferred stock are tied to current market interest rates. These are known as adjustable rate preferred stock.